Hello, Gemini. Welcome back to Peel Me More, where we happen to help you find the beauty in all things. Thank you guys so much for tuning back in. Um, I really appreciate you. And we were told <laughs> that for the entire month of September, we're going to go back to doing the weekly breakout. We have so much going on. If you are part of my Facebook community, then you will have seen that I kind of did a review of the five planets that are still currently in retrograde as we get ready for the sixth here this month, which is Mercury retrograde and what has been occurring and what is getting ready to occur for the remainder of this upcoming month. So um, we're going to take this time and we're going to break down September week by week. So we're going to do this. We're going to pull one card for an overall energy that you are still carrying into um, the beginning of September. We're going to pull um, a sacred geometry card, but this purpose for this one this week is to help you clear using the energy, understanding what it is that you can do to clear that energy. Then we're going to pull your seven cards for um, the 5th through the 11th. Um, we will go through a card uh, from the universe that talks about where you should take a look at uh, what's happening in your specific personal chart. If you happen to know it, I'll do my best if you don't to describe what day of the week that could really affect you. What's going to be your better day of the week or the day you need to put some attention on. And then um, because we have right after Mercury retrograde a full moon on Saturday, I'm going to pull a crystal card that I think will support you with any releasing that you need to do um, during, uh, towards the weekend. And we'll cap it off at that, okay? So the first card that we have here, my friends, is talking about the fact that we have time. Mm, Taurus. <laughs> We have had um, a lot of energies in your space, especially when we got to the certain part of um, um, August, because we have uh, basically a few different things that are taking place for you. Now, Uranus in Taurus is going to be with us for the remainder of the year. That has a lot of stuff that surfaces when it comes to like more global things, right? more world things, more generational things, more things of that nature, some disruptions and things like that that are taking place. But when we get into the energy of um, Uranus itself, and that's what this is representing, it is Uranus. Uranus is the energy of uh, the fool. We're being told here that there's a little bit of a failure to leap. And for whatever reason, you're waiting because you think you're waiting for something like you're waiting for something or someone to show up to help you with whatever this particular XYZ happens to be for you. So the universe is saying you're still carrying that energy here into the month of September, at least this beginning week. We're going to take a look at that. Um, and the universe says that may be OK for just a little bit more time. Um, you do have to launch. <laughs> you have to X or get off the pot, okay? Um, but there is a little bit of time that the universe is going to support you. Overall, what I think they're getting ready to tell you, Taurus, is that uh, for you specifically, very interestingly, I'm, there, I'm just getting this information now, Mercury Retrograde might not actually be that bad for you. But let's go ahead and see um, what the Sacred Geometry cards have to say to support you with releasing yourself from any of those energies um, that you might feel are, are holding you back. <laughs> well, you can't make this stuff up, you guys. We have the flight of the phoenix. We have inevitable change. It means take your, uh, take get it done. That's basically what it's saying. It's time to get it done. You have to take control. You have to take charge. Inevitable change is getting ready to come up. Now, it seems to me like what you have been doing <laughs> um, is, again, holding on, waiting for something to happen, and the universe is going, your time is limited. You've got this much space left in order to do that. So let's find out what the universe wants to talk to you about this particular week. Let's get your seven cards down, and uh, let's let's take it from there. So quick review. Um, uh, this is the week of Virgo, <laughs> Capricorn, Aquarius... Um, and Pisces before we switch over on the weekend towards um, Aries. Um, so if you have any of those placements in your chart very, very heavy, whether it's your sun, moon, uh, rising, 
uh, combination. You may want to go and take a look at one of those other readings, but let's go ahead and get this done. Monday, Tuesday. Yep. Wednesday, Thursday. You know what? Just for shits and giggles, guys, because this I don't very rarely ch challenge myself when I'm shuffling. I shuffled this 17,000 times after I just did um, the previous reading. And I have a feeling they're getting ready to pop back out. But I just, I just got to do it. I just got to do it. It's not uncommon, of course, because we do have same cards that pop out when people are on the cusp. But I just want to make sure that everything that Taurus needs to know is exactly what Taurus needs to know. And if those cards are meant to come back out, they will. All right, Monday. Okay, same, same, same concept, different card. Tuesday's energy for Taurus. We first have the lovers that are in the reverse position on Monday, which is Labor Day. Um, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, some of you guys that are watching this are on the cusp of um, Aries. And so I want you to go and take a look at that Aries reading. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's get the energy for Wednesday. Let's get the energy for Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Let's get Friday. Ooh. Saturday. It's the same cards. <laughs> and Sunday. Um, this is going to be very similar. And we have two energies on Sunday. So we're going to take them. Um, I know what they're talking about here. It makes literally 100%. So your reading is going to be just a tad bit different. Because there's a little bit extra detail. But that is okay. Um, okay. So please go and take a look at that um, uh, Aries reading. Especially if you're on the cusp. Because there's going to be more information in there for you. Um, ultimately, what this week is about for you is getting out of your head. What is preventing you from, like, moving forward? The universe is like, this is the week where you got to X or get off the pot, friend. And so you're trying to think about things that have supported you in the past, but you're also holding on to a lot of energy about things that um, you feel like you've stopped yourself on, like you... You, for whatever reason, you can't launch. You can't make that next thing happen. You know what you're supposed to do, but for whatever reason, you just can't put that first foot in front of you in order to get the whole process started. That is what this week is all about and what the universe wants you to start working on this week, okay? Because once Mercury goes into retrograde, um, when we get into Friday, it starts to do its little slowdown. It can still happen, but it could be even more challenging for you. So let's take a look at what this is. Now, the first card that we have on Monday is Labor Day, okay? And Labor Day, one of the beautiful things that's actually popping up here is that we have Venus entering into the sign of um, Virgo. We're in Virgo season. Virgo season is all about kind of going within a little bit, but understanding what it is that you've learned up until this particular moment, right? And there'd be some things that need to change. When you have the energy of the lovers in the reverse position, <laughs> Usually it means that there is a, a challenge in a relationship or a working relationship and or we're not making the best decisions that are potentially in front of us that we need to take a look at. It is possible that you could be dealing with a Gemini just to put the signage out there, but this is 100% about your clarity and mental awareness. And so you're missing a piece of information that shows up on Monday. Now, Monday is Labor Day here in the United States, so hopefully you have a day off. If you don't, be aware of that. There could be some challenges if you're working, uh, if you're working potentially, okay? But more so than anything that I'm getting, this has everything to do with you not making clear, strong decisions. Okay. The other reason that I bring that up is because we have three squares that also take place um, on Monday. Now, the moon's going to start to shift into the sign of Capricorn, which should be your supporting factor, right, to Earth signs. But what you have to understand is two of those are in square with Aries, okay? So that's fire and passion and trying to move forward with lots of different types of things. And you've got squares, which is conflict. So be aware of that first and foremost. The first one is Chiron and Aries. And Chiron is asking you to take personal responsibility with your drive, your focus. The second square that comes in to play is the energy of Jupiter um, in Aries, which is more so the energy of like expanding yourself and abundance and money. I have to say that for you, Taurus. This for you is all about money this week. Or at least getting to that next level. And 
the other thing that shows up here, which is very, very interesting, is that factor that Le that uh, Mercury is going to be having a conversation with Libra. Now, Libra wants to be able to balance some things out. Okay, it is your sister when it comes to the energy of Venus being here, but there's this conversation that Venus and Mercury are having, Libra specifically, about how do we balance out? How do we get from this point where we're stuck in our head and we can't move to how do we get you to move? So just know that there could be a little bit of tension on Monday. Let's move to the energy of Tuesday for you, Taurus, and let's see what we've got going on. On Tuesday, we have the energy of the Ten of Cups in the reverse position. Mm. We kind of talked about this already. But what this is meaning is that there's some level of unhappiness or instability, instability when it comes to either your work or your home. Something is not quite up to snuff. And part of the energy that you're feeling or could potentially be feeling here on Tuesday is a little bit more of that ouchy factor that got thrown at you on Monday. The moon's fully in the sign of Capricorn on this day. But it will switch over into the sign of Aquarius a little bit later on in the evening. But the other big thing that pops up for on Tuesday for you is that there is a conjunction, my friends, with Pluto and Capricorn. Okay, so Taurus, why do you care about that? Because Pluto is asking you to think. It's asking you to use your judgment. It's asking you to figure some things out. And Capricorn is asking you to do the steady eddy uh, type of conversation. So basically the universe is going, wake up. <laughs> we got things to talk about here. But there is a gorgeous trine that takes place on the day for you as well. And it really trines literally in the sign of Taurus and in the sign of, uh, well, it's, it's Neptune energy that pops forward. So there's a couple of things that are going to happen for you. It's this energy of where you feel you are bound and restricted just a little bit with the energy of pushing forward and expanding yourself. Um, it is, it, it's necessary. So Taurus, there's some things that have to get done here. You have to take a, you have to take advantage of what the universe is calling your attention to. Let's get to the energy of Wednesday. Um, we have another major arcana here. This major arcana that we have is the chariot in the reverse position. The chariot in the reverse position is like a pretty much, it's an all stop. We've stopped. We are not passing go. We are not collecting that $200. We're stopping the energy. Now, when we get to the energy of the chariot for you this particular week here on Wednesday, one of the things I want to call your attention to is the fact that we do have some shifting that's going on in the universe. We've got the moon now transitioning into the sign of um, Aquarius. It'll be there in the sign of Aquarius. We have everything that I mentioned earlier on Tuesday, except that now the conversation with Mercury and Libra is about, okay, now we've agreed what we need to do. And so before we move forward, we're stopping and we're listening. So I like the energy of what's happening on this for you on Wednesday. The moon is going to move back. Excuse me. The sun is going to move back into the sign of, um, well, the sun's in the sign of, of Venus. Or I keep saying Venus. I'm trying to say Virgo. Virgo? <laughs> but what happens is that whole Chiron in Aries position that we talked a little bit about on Monday is really going, okay, now I know what I'm supposed to do. Now I know that I feel confident in doing the things that I'm supposed to do. So Wednesday is going to be a huge energetic day for you. Just put it that way. Okay. If you don't know by Wednesday, you're going to know. When we get to the energy of Thursday, my friends, we have the energy of the Seven of Swords. Now, a lot of people think that this is a sneaky card, but it's not. It is strategy, my friends. It's strategy. It's self-preservation. It is protection. It is, I realize that I have to do this in order to get that. And so this is the energy that you're in, and I like it. This is a positive card for you when we get to Thursday. One of the things that is getting ready to take place here is this beautiful conjunction, okay, this really grand conversation that's going to be taking place between um, Saturn, your personal responsibilities, okay, your personal structure um, taking place with Aquarius. And so the Aquarius energy is how we can make it happen. The, I want to call it airy fairy type of energy, but the huge expansion of what could take place. Thursday is the day where you make a decision to get some stuff done. You are strategizing. Now, this is what I find interesting on Friday. Woohoo! 
Friday's energy with this card being in the sideways position, as you guys know, this usually means that you are literally still thinking about this and there's literally some things that can get done here. We have the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups means two people coming together. It means two positive energies working together. It means two positive groups of people coming together. It means that there is a solid choice that is getting ready to beep, 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 be made. So where you had the uh, lovers in the reverse position as far as two people or energies. Now you have the strong potential of putting this in the upright when you get to Friday. So like I said, Mercury in retrograde is not going to mess with you, Taurus, as much as you think, as long as you get it together beginning of this week, okay? When it's in the sideways position, you are 100% in control of how this goes down. So I would say that for some of you, um, this has a lot to do with this next card that's going to take place um, as well. If it's in the sideways position and you get all the way up, then the next day's card will shift for you. This is the coming together for new employment, new contracts, new working situation, making a decision to put some more energy into something. So I left them separate like that because I wanted you guys to understand how the shift is going to be taking place, but it has everything to do with how you control this, okay? Um... I am going to uh, definitely clarify this particular card because we do have an opposition that takes place here on Friday. The opposition that's taking place is the energy of the moon in Pisces. And it has this strong conversation again with um, Venus in um, Virgo about how do we practically take these energies in, which is why it's sideways because there's this slight hesitancy that takes place here on on Friday. The other thing though is we definitely have a square that shows up and so that's heavy aggressive Mars that's talking to um, our friends in the Gemini world that dualistic you know yin yang energy and so a hundred percent of this could be the way that you approach this but it's not going to be all up to you especially with that aggressive energy of Mars coming in there could be a very strong person or personality. So we're going to take a look at that one. Now, when we get to the energy of Saturday and Sunday, I definitely want to let you know that on Saturday, of course, we have the Ten of Wands in the reverse position. This is our full moon in Pisces. And we have a lot of gorgeous things that are taking place on this day. Um, we also have a conjunction with that whole Neptune in the sign of Pisces. So there is a little bit of finally allowing yourself to take that final burden off of your shoulders. You're going to finally be dropping this. Um, whatever this extra weight was that was on your shoulder, it's gone. And the universe wants to be able to support you with that. When we get to Sunday, 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 we have the energy of uh, Sagittarius, temperance coming in here, talking about balance. It's balance. It's patience. It's balancing the energies that you have just released. It's allowing yourself to take new steps forward. But we also have the moon entering into the sign of um, Aries on this particular day. So it is appropriate with all of the fire energy, energy that is showing up. But the sexy thing also on this day for you, my friends, is that the moon, excuse me, the sun, <laughs> I'm sorry, the sun in Virgo is actually doing this trine now. So it's having this positive conversation with Taurus in Neptune. So it's awesome. Let's spend a few minutes just going through this one quick um, and then we will wrap it up with a crystal that will support you for that whole releasing process. Okay, so let us find out a little bit more information about this Two of Cups with this Eight of Pentacles situation for our Taurus. Queen of Pentacles, the Hangman in Reverse. Oh my God, you cannot make this stuff up. Yep, mm-hmm. We have the Two of uh, Wands, and then we have the Six of Swords. Literally what I was talking about. For many of you, this is taking on a new job, taking on a new side job or project, or there's some sort of a shift that you are supporting yourself with um, involving somebody else, okay? So I'll explain this. The Queen of Pentacles. <laughs> This is Taurus's energy, right? We are talking about being grounded and strong and um, being self-aware of where we're at with our capabilities of taking things into position. The hangman in the reverse position, my friends, is the energy of Neptune. When the hangman presents in reverse, it means that you receive the detail that you needed to get here you finally figured it out and you've understood and you are going to be accepting some sort of a conversation. You are going to be accepting a handshake of some way, shape, form or another from somebody else. The so two of wands is here. 
and then you get the Six of Swords as well. Guidance coming from the universe trying to help support you. Yes. Okay. Now, we're going to take one card that is going to also let you know what else could be affecting you within your chart for this particular week. And then I'll cap it off with the crystal card that is here. Although I'm pretty sure we've already discussed it. Let's see what pops out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mercury is not going to affect you. Mercury retrograde is not going to mess with you. We already talked about that, okay? The messages that are coming in, you're already starting to receive and have already understood because you're carrying it with you. The biggest issue for you is the releasing of the boundary that you feel that you've been stuck in with the whole Saturn energy, okay? And the whole Saturn energy that we have was retrograde starting in June. So honestly, many of you have been stuck in this energy of not launching pretty much the whole mm, summer. <laughs> However, you're releasing yourself from those particular structures as we speak this upcoming week, okay? Now, let's get your crystal card here. Here we go. Let's see what is going to support our Taurus. Got to get it done. This is the week. No more Mr. or Mrs. Nice Guy. All right. What's the crystal that can support our Taurus with this full moon release here? There it is. Thank you. And the crystal that we have, if you happen to have it, oh my God, it's also card 10. We have the energy of 1010. This stone here is called Dalmatian Jasper. That's what it is. Dalmatian Jasper is for our friends. And what it's talking about is supporting you with your inner child, okay? It's supporting you with letting um, anything that's been holding you back. It's allowing you to find your joy as you start to make these new steps forward. So Dalmatian Jasper is a very beautiful stone. It has a gorgeous, gorgeous energy. If you don't have one, get one. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so Taurus, that is what I have for you this week. We will see you next week. Many blessings. Bye for now.